let's talk about Oppenheimer. Um, I just finished watching the movie Oppenheimer and it left me with a lot of questions, but also needing a lot of answers. The world that we live in, how much control do we have of it? You and I, you being, I'm assuming a normal person and me being a normal person, how much control do we have? How much power do scientists have? You know, it made me wonder how a bunch of men can come up together, create a little space um, in New Mexico and create a bomb that could destroy the world. And you and I would not even know. You and I would not even, we won't even have the time, you know, because when they made the bomb, the calculations proved that there was a possibility that they could trigger the um they could ignite the atmosphere, essentially destroying the world. But not only were, was that bomb made and tested, two of them were used in, in war. And all those three times, something catastrophic could have happened. And then we all know the rest is history. And the fact, one thing I like about the movie is it shows that these men, whilst knowing all this, went ahead and did it. And these were not people whom... You know, where it's like, oh, shoot, we didn't know what we were doing. These are people who knew what they were doing and who were smart enough to understand the risk that was involved in the actions that they were taking. But somehow still decided to do it, A, to win the race to nuclearization because, you know, who would have known? I think we live in a world now of lesser evils of whereby do we prefer that the Americans had the atomic bomb first or did we want the Nazis to have the bomb first? What would have Hitler done? if the Germans had been first at it or if the Russians, you know, in the movie that depicts as communists had been first to it, what would have happened? No one knows, right? And the funny thing is back in the Second World War, Russia and America were allies. So the secrecy and, and things like that and how it became all politicized and how how much could have happened and what actually happened and what we know now to be true in today's day and time. Um, one thing I liked about the movie is it, it raises all these questions and it makes us answer them. It doesn't answer them for us. It, it just raises the questions in the sense of this is who Robert Oppenheimer was. This is what he did. What do you think? And what do you think today? The chain reaction was his biggest fear. He, he was afraid that um, if their calculation goes wrong, this is what could happen. And what I like about it is at the end of the movie, they, they show how the chain reaction occurred, whereby it wasn't necessarily that it would ignite the atmosphere. It was more of more governments would have this and an arms race would be done in terms of nuclear. We've seen this, you know, with different treaties and talks that have happened over countries like Iran and, the, you know, during Obama's reign and, and how much you know, feared North Korea is and, and, and all that and what could happen in the possibilities and how now we live in a time whereby by pressing a button, somebody could destroy the planet, you know. It's crazy, but that's the world we live in. I think Christopher Nolan did a good job in making us question this and in hope, hoping we can find answers. I mean, we all have, and what I believe is, I believe in, in, in humanity and I believe we have a great future, but we cannot be ignorant to the possibilities. And I feel like, this movie helps us question that and it helps us not necessarily come up with an answer because I don't think a simple answer exists, right? Like right now when we look at the war in Ukraine and things like that and the possibilities, like imagine if these guys just started throwing nuclear bombs at each other, what would happen? And this is because of the man, Robert Oppenheimer. One of the main things that I thought about when I was watching the movie was how these people were like, we're in a race, right? They were like, the Germans are hurt ahead and we have to catch up <laughs> and you're like man you, you're trying to catch up in creating weapons of mass destruction like how how is this even a race you know and that's something that's constantly fascinating i think now we've moved from nuclear to ai to artificial intelligence and how in our day and age right now it's it's a matter of what's going to happen because i think back then their question was what's going to happen with nuclear like what what does you know, this uranium, what can it be used for and what can it do? And they had to come up with answers real quick and they saw what it can do. It killed over 100,000 people and I think people are still affected by the effects of the nuclear bombs to this day. And I think that's the same boat we find ourselves in 
with artificial intelligence is good for humanity to an extent, but there are fears, right? Like it can replace people's jobs. You know, I work in the film industry and I remember being scanned last year for a film that I did and you're like, damn, bro. Like they never hired me again after scanning my body. So you're like, what does this mean? And what does this mean for the future? I saw a video of one lady going, oh, imagine you could just by the click of a button be like, give me a movie by Johnny Depp and Kevin Hart. You're like, that's scary. That's not something that, that satisfies me, you know. But going back to Oppenheimer, um, I think that it's a movie that raises real questions that we have to answer, you know. Um, when we look at the story, if you follow the storyline of Louis Strauss played by Robert Downey Jr., where he's questioning Oppenheimer and he's questioning Oppenheimer's credentials for him getting access to national security, being a, a communist, but on the other hand, you're like, okay, from a political side, this is what's happening. But the question is, from a scientific perspective, what was the role of Oppenheimer and how he believed and came up with his theories and how he developed these things is, do you want the man who's creating such powerful weapons not having access to national security or should you look at him as a threat to national security and how often goals are separated, you know, how politicians are focused on political stuff and where the real danger is, is in what this man can create. Like imagine if they ostracized the man and he left his country and he was not loyal to his country and gave his information to the enemies, what could have happened or what if, 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 if Oppenheimer really wanted to see the destruction of America, the knowledge that he possessed and the things that he could do, you know, the man is forever remembered as the man who, for the Trinity test and not necessarily for the moms. And that in itself, you know, is, is a big thing that the movie questions in terms of what's valuable. Is it what, how we see people and how we perceive them politically or is it what they can do? I live in a world where now I'm like, COVID was a good reminder for me that we should fear scientists because they have a lot of control and they have a lot of power and they can do things that most of us cannot do anything about. We just we, 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 we just live in their world, right? We just live in that space whereby what can you do? With one press of a button, you could ignite the entire atmosphere. What would you and I be able to do? What, what power do we have in, in the world that we live in? You know, and I think that that's one of the critical questions that this movie asks of us is, is is that, you know, these people are people who are just like you and me, you know, but what they do best is is create this stuff that's scary and yeah. So if you watched Oppenheimer, let me know in the comment section what were your thoughts, what questions did you come out asking for me? I left that room being like, what's our priorities? What, what are our politicians' priorities? What's our scientists' priorities? Is it for the better of humanity when you know you could destroy it? And what's the ethical and moral grounds that these scientists stand upon? And can scientists participate in politics? What are we doing? <laughs>